Hello everyone, it's Morgana here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing something slightly different. Um, today we're going to be doing an unboxing of these Arteza watercolour card blanks. Uh, to celebrate reaching 250 subscribers on this channel. Uh, so if you're new here, thank you very much for subscribing and welcome. Uh, and if you're not, then thank you for sticking around. <laughs> uh, and without any further ado, uh, let's get on with it. So I bought these from Amazon in England, amazon.co.uk, but um, I dare say you can probably find them elsewhere. And they were a wee bit expensive. They were 20-ish pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds 99. Uh, so whatever that is in, the, in your local currency, you can convert that online. Um, but yes, so you've got 25 in a pack. They are 100% cotton, cold press, which is what I like to use. Uh, and it should be designed specifically for watercolour. And they come with envelopes as well, which, I mean, you would hope so for 20 quid. Um, there we are. So these are some of the cards. Let's have a look at one. Oh, that feels lovely. <laughs> First sight. Um, you can see here that they've got slight texture to the paper. Just making sure that you can see that there. Very nice, very nice. They feel very soft. Not too soft, obviously. I don't feel like tissue paper, but just the texture here feels like it's really going to take the paint and the water very nicely. Uh, and they're a good size as well, I think. Uh, it says on the box, I believe they are, yes, roughly five by seven, uh, which is a good size for frames and things. I think a lot of picture frames, a lot of photograph frames come in that sort of size. So uh, that should be good. So if you paint a beautiful card or a beautiful picture for somebody that they, they like, they can keep it and they can frame it without having to order sort of custom supplies, which is always a bonus. It's always nice to make things easier for people. There we go, and these are the envelopes. Our teas are there, of course. Not really surprised about that. Yeah, nice quality envelope, nice color. Not quite white, I think just slightly off white, which is nice, nicer than pure white. There you go, lovely fit. Very nice. Well, I'm excited about these. I'm excited about the quality. I'd be even more excited if I could, <laughs> there we go, if I could fit it in. That's me being clumsy this morning. Um, well, well, there we have it. Lovely, well, time to paint something, I guess. <laughs> um, I will be back as soon as I've managed to Ooh, get this card out of the envelope off camera uh, and I will get set up and uh, decide what I want to paint for you guys. Um, I'll be right back. All right, so here I am set up, uh, all ready to paint. Um, you can see I've sketched out a quick sort of autumnal blackberry design, not too detailed, just a quick outline. Uh, and I've taped down the card so it just looks like an ordinary piece of watercolour paper uh, using just bog standard masking tape um, on my board. So I want this to be uh, quite a loose painting this time. This isn't going to be uh, super detailed. This one, I really want this one to... Uh, be a simple painting, um, it will be done in a couple of layers uh, and I'm going to use a few different sort of lovely rich autumnal colours uh, as you'll see here. As you can see I'm beginning with a layer of burnt sienna and burnt umber uh, dotted in with a little bit of watered down perylene green. Uh, this is a really nice colour combination for autumn. You can see I'm just loosely washing it in here. 
uh, not worrying too much about following the outlines just yet. This is why my pencil outlines are, you know, quite, uh, quite light, quite loose. Because as you can see, I'm just dabbing the paint out on a very light, uh, almost translucent colour for this first wash. You can see here, I'm just going in and sort of splodging in these blackberries here. My first initial colour I'm using uh, is Purple Lake. You can see that it's a lovely, bright, vibrant colour here. I'm leaving some white because uh, I want to be able to do uh, light reflections in the sort of the glossy berry part of the blackberry. So I'm just sort of splodging in the colour for this first layer. And now that it's dry, you can see I'm going in with my fine detail brush. This is a triple zero round fine detail brush. Uh, going in with some darker paint uh, in exactly the same shades as before and starting to carefully put in some outlines and some shading and some lovely uh, rich darker colours uh, to really bring out the detail in the bramble and in the leaves. As you can see here, the primary colours that I'm using are Burnt Sienna and Perilene Green. Just using those to uh, bring in some darks and bring in some detail. You can see that I'm not going too overboard with the detail here. Like I said before, I want this to be a lovely loose painting. I want the uh, lovely sort of painterly impressions of leaves and berries, uh, rather than something uh, more like one of the botanicals that I would do. Something quite heavily detailed. So with these lovely blackberry leaves, I decided I wanted a lovely mottled effect. Didn't just want them to be just green, just one plain colour. Because after all, autumn is here, or at least uh, it's here in the UK. It's uh, mid-September now as I'm filming. Uh, and the leaves are just starting to turn. We're getting those lovely combinations of green and rust coloured and russet and brown and all those good colours of autumn, which is uh, what I'm trying to reflect here. And I know that right now this still isn't looking like much, but trust me, uh, you'll get there. This painting will get there. Uh, this is a technique which requires a couple of different layers. Uh, so obviously the first layer you saw me putting in is that very sort of pale, splodgy, washy layer. Uh, and now this is number two.
So now you can see here, I'm just filling in and starting to do uh, some detail on the berries. As you can see, I'm still not being overly careful using a sort of little round motions with the brush uh, just to give the, uh, the impression of these lovely sort of juicy ripe blackberries. Still keeping plenty of white in there uh, so that we can give the impression of light uh, glistening off the surface of the berries. For this I'm using Purple Lake and uh, if it seems a little bit darker than it does normally then don't worry. Um, I think I actually had it mixed uh, on my palette with a little bit of accidental Payne's Grey or Ultramarine. Uh, something left over that unfortunately ran into it, but uh, we'll call that a happy accident. <laughs> because uh, I was intending to go over with Payne's Grey anyway, as you will see later in the tutorial. So uh, for those of you who uh, have Purple Lake and love using Purple Lake like me, you'll see that's why it's not quite as, as um, bright and pinkish in tone in some of these bits. See here, still just scribbling these berries in, just using gentle little circular motions and a decent amount of paint on the brush. Now just popping in a little bit of vibrancy to these lovely flowers, this little pair of flowers here at the end, using our favourite bright flower colours, uh, Gambo's Yellow and Opera Rose Pink. Uh, quite watered down for this of course, but um, I do love how they sort of seem to pop out of every single painting. Really lovely bright colours. You can see here I'm putting in a decent amount with the brush, quite a watered down solution but still quite a lot of water and then just pulling it out to get that lovely sort of loose edges. Uh, these almost, uh, these lost and found edges uh, as I believe they're called. The, uh, the technique of allowing the paint to sort of bloom out from your outlines and give a, a smudginess, a looseness, a sort of beautiful translucency drifting away from the outline. Uh, which is what I'm trying to encourage here at this moment. You can see I'm plopping some paint on, pulling it up with a tissue, just to make sure it doesn't get too dark or too opaque. Just want that beautiful translucency and shine. You can see I'm going in here again. This is what I would call my third layer. Uh, going in with some really, really sort of dark edges. I uh, like to introduce some dark here, some shadow, just to, just to bring it all out a bit. Just to really emphasise some of those dark points, those hard edges. Um, which also in turn emphasises the looseness of the rest. So for the dark edges of the foliage, I'm using perlene green in its quite highly concentrated form, not a lot of water. You can see it's a very, very dark paint. And you can see here for the berries, I've switched to Payne's Grey. And I'm just using little circular motions again with my fine detail brush, covering up uh, some of that purple, just deepening the colour, allowing some to show through, obviously, uh, but just really building up that lovely richness, that lovely layer of colour.
bear in mind that with the blackberries, of course, we still want some white space to show through, still hints and glints of white. Uh, this is a common mistake to make with watercolour. It's very easy for the paint to run and go everywhere and you lose your whites. Uh, obviously, there are ways to get them back, uh, which I'll also show you shortly, using a little bit of uh, white gouache paint. Uh, but it's also nice to try and keep, keep the whites of the paper wherever possible. See here, just a little bit more decorative background work. Give a little bit of background to those pretty berries. And here you are, that's my white gouache, that's Winsor & Newton. And I'm about to show you, look, there we are, just dabbing it on very gently. All you do is pop, squeeze a little bit into your palette uh, with a little bit of water, just get a nice amount on your brush. Uh, and if you've lost the whites in your paper, you can just go back in and dab them on. But um, do make sure, that obviously, that your watercolour is fully dry by this point. Uh, otherwise, you will get colour bleed and your white will not be white. It will be sort of a dirty grey colour or uh, a pale variation of whatever paint you're putting it on. And there we are, happy with the, uh, the blackberry painting. Uh, considering that this is a greetings card, which uh, I sort of forgot whilst I was doing the painting, but... Uh, remembered shortly after, um, I decided to put on some text, some calligraphy. Um, I am not the best at this, I will be the first to admit that this uh, text was probably a mistake. Um, but what the hell, it's on there now. Uh, <laughs> um, I was originally planning to do this with a stencil, uh, using a technique that I will show you in another video because um, it is brilliant, it's really good and it works really well, it looks a lot better than this. Um, but this is me just freehanding with the brush. And there we are. Finished piece. This is still slightly wet, so I'm, I'm letting it dry fully before I uh, take it from the board. You can see there the, uh, the lost and found edges, those leaves sort of disappearing into the ether, <laughs> into the background. Uh, lovely sort of pale green and purple sort of uh, colours there. Really, really happy with this. And moreover, really, really happy actually with the Arteza card blanks. Really, yeah, absolutely would recommend them. Um, I'm not sponsored in any way by Arteza. Um, and you can see there that my masking tape has pulled a little bit off that top edge there. I don't know if that was me just being a bit too uh, enthusiastic as I was uh, pulling the tape off. Um, let me know if you also had that problem with these Arteza card blanks. Um, but yeah. Overall, I'm really happy with them, and I think I would buy them again. Uh, and I'm actually really looking forward to painting some cards for friends and family this Christmas. So that's the video. Um, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe for more videos from me. And um, yeah, happy painting, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.